We're going to go over some examples of finding these limits and function values on this graph of a really nasty function. I'll also give you a quick example to try on your own after and talk briefly about that. If you're studying calculus, you want a good understanding of functions and certainly of limits. So exercises like these should be really easy. If they're not, you just got to practice some more, maybe read and or listen to some explanations a few more times and hopefully it sticks. Hopefully this will be helpful. Let's get into it. Beginning with A, this asks us to identify the value of the function at x equals negative 2. That's what f of negative 2 means. So we come on over to our graph and look at where x equals negative 2. And what you'll see is that there is no point. There's no dot. There's no black mark indicating the value of the function at x equals negative 2. Instead, there's just this blue dotted line indicating an asymptote, in this case a vertical asymptote. So that's an x-coordinate that the function is never going to reach. So x equals negative 2 isn't actually in this function's domain. It doesn't have a value at x equals negative 2. So we would just say does not exist. Now letter b asks us to find the limit of our function as x approaches negative 2. We just found that the function had no value at x equals negative 2. But remember, the function's value, whether defined or not, at negative 2 has nothing at all to do with the limit as x approaches negative 2. Notice in this limit, no direction is indicated, whether we're approaching from the left or the right, so that means it's a two-sided limit. To evaluate a two-sided limit, we need to consider the one-sided limits. Let's begin here with the limit of our function as x approaches negative 2 from the left. So here's x equals negative 2, and this means that we're going to be approaching from the left, but remember we're approaching on our function. So it's what the function is doing that is important to the limit. So we're staying to the left of x equals negative 2, and we're looking at our function, which is right here. This is to the left of negative 2 on our function. What is our function doing as x approaches negative 2 from the left? Well, we see that it's just going off downwards towards negative infinity. So our limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of our function is negative infinity. The function is just getting very, very negative. Now, the other one-sided limit is the limit of the function as x approaches negative 2 from the right. So we're over on this side, over here, and again, remember, we're staying on the function. We're wondering what does the function do as we approach the negative 2 x-coordinate. And looking at this function, as we approach x equals negative 2, this function from the right is just veering off to positive infinity. So from the left, we found it was going to negative infinity, but from the right, we can see that it's going off to positive infinity. So that is our limit from the right. Now, since the one-sided limits are not equal, this one's negative infinity, this one's positive infinity, since they're not equal, the two-sided limit does not exist. Remember, that is the definition of a two-sided limit not existing, when the one-sided limits are not equal. All right, moving on to letter C. This just asks us to identify the function's value at x equals 0. So we come over to x equals 0. What is our function's value there? Well, it's not this right here, which looks like it might be 1 half. It's not that, because that's an open circle, indicating the function does not take that value there. Instead, we want to look at the filled in circle, saying, hey, this is the actual value of the function at this point. When x is equal to 0, the function's actual value is 4. So f of 0 is 4. 4. Again, that's indicated to us by the filled in circle in contrast to the open circle where there is a little hole or what we might call actually a jump because our function jumps from down here to up there. Now on to the limit of our function as x approaches 0. Again, this is a two-sided limit, so to evaluate it, we need to consider the one-sided limits. Let's begin with this one, the limit of our function as x approaches 0 from the right. So here's x equals 0. We're going to be approaching from the right, from over here. 
and we're staying on our function. What is our function doing as we approach x equals zero from the right? Well, it looks like our function is getting closer and closer to four. Again, that's from the right. That's what's happening as we go towards x equals zero. The function is approaching a value of four. And so that is the limit from the right. Now, the limit of our function as x approaches zero from the left, we're coming in hot from this direction. We gotta stay on our function. What's happening from the left? Well, from the left, our function is going down and down, and it's approaching a value of what looks to be one half. That's the limit from the left. Again, here we see that the one-sided limits are not equal. From one direction, we're going towards a half. From the other direction, we are going towards four. Again, the actual value at x equals zero, which we know is four, does not matter for the limit. As we approach from different directions, the limits are different. Thus, the two-sided limit, again in this case, does not exist because the one-sided limits are not equal. Next, letter E asks us the value of our function at x equals two. So we come over to the graph and look at this vertical line where x is equal to two. What's the value of the function here? Well, we can see there's just an empty circle indicating that the function takes on no value at x equals two. So at x equals two, our function does not exist. Two is not in the function's domain. Remember with x equals zero, we also had this open circle, but we saw the function did actually have a value with this filled in dot that was above it. But in this case at x equals two, there is no filled in dot, there's just the open circle. All right, let's then move on to the limit. So we're asked to find the limit of the function as x approaches two. Again, to evaluate this two-sided limit, we will need to consider the one-sided limits. Let's begin with what our function is approaching as x approaches two from the right. So we're coming in from this direction, from the right of x equals two, and what is our function doing? It's approaching that same value that we had before of one half. So the limit as x approaches two from the right is a half. And then the limit as x approaches two from the left, now we're approaching two from this direction. And what's our function doing as we approach two from the left? Well, it looks like it's doing the same thing. From the left, it's also approaching one half. So the limit from the left is a half. So what we see here, even though the function doesn't have a value at x equals two, its limits from both sides are equal. They're both a half. So the two-sided limit is also one half. All right, one more x-coordinate we're gonna look at. What's the value of the function at x equals four? Well, come over to where x equals four, and we see that indeed we have a point on our function here. It's this filled in dot. At x equals four, the value of our function looks to be two. So f of four is equal to two. Now to evaluate the two-sided limit as x approaches four, we will look at the one-sided limits. The limit of our function as x approaches four, let's do from the left first, just to switch it up. We're approaching four from the left, so we're coming in from this direction. What's our function doing? Well, as we're approaching four from the left, looks like the function is just veering off to positive infinity. So that is the limit from the left. The function is going to positive infinity. Then what's the limit of our function as x approaches four from the right? We're coming in from this direction, staying on the function, approaching four from the right, and it looks like the function is just veering off again to positive infinity. So here, the one-sided limits, they're both infinite, but they are both equal in this case. So we can say that the two-sided limit as x approaches four is positive infinity. So notice through all of these examples, we have points where the function's value and the limit both don't exist. We have an example where only the function's value exists, but the limit doesn't. We have an example where the limit exists, but the function's value doesn't. And we have an example where they both exist, even though in this case, the limit happens to be infinite, that's still a limit. 
So give this example a try yourself. Four questions, hopefully you can do it. All right, I'll go over these real quick. The value of the function at x equals one, we see here at x equals one, the filled in circle tells us our function has a value of two. Now the limit of the function as x approaches one does not exist because as we approach from the left, it looks like the function's going to three and a half. As we approach from the right, it looks like the function is going to one. So the two sided limit as x approaches one doesn't exist. The value of the function at x equals four, we see that doesn't exist because all we've got is an open hole. So f of four does not exist. But the limit of the function as x approaches four, this two-sided limit, that certainly does exist. From the left, it looks like the function's value, the y-coordinate, is approaching two. And from the right, as x approaches four, it also looks like the function's value is approaching two. So the limit as x approaches four is equal to two. Hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Hidden.